Hi, in this video I'll be talking about new data on the use of bone modifying agents in people with breast cancer. Bone modifying agents are really good for bones. They strengthen the bones. You may have heard of things on you know, regular commercials to help make your bones stronger. We use these drugs in people with metastatic breast cancer to the bone or other cancers to the bone. But we're talking now about using the bone modifying agents, especially the bisphosphonates, in people who've completed adjuvant therapy. Just as a quick reminder, Adjuvant therapy is treatment given before or after breast cancer surgery in the absence of any measurable disease. So we're talking about treatment that goes through the body, like anti-estrogen therapy um, or uh, other systemic therapies. Chemotherapy can be given either before or afterwards. But basically, this is given in the curative setting. So based on some recent studies that were published, it looks as though the evidence is mounting that getting a bone modifying agent when you're done with your surgery or if you get chemo when you're done with your chemotherapy or if you get surgery, radiation and chemotherapy, when you're done with all of that, that within the next couple months, if you're postmenopausal, starting a bone modifying agent in the next couple months can actually reduce your risk of breast cancer recurrence to a small degree but it's a real degree. So if you're postmenopausal, regardless of whether it's a natural menopause or menopause induced by chemotherapy or because we're suppressing your ovaries with medication, talk with your doctor about being on a bone modifying agent, specifically a bisphosphonate. There are three of those, zolindronic acid, I'll have these on the screen, zolindronic acid, abandronate, and clodronate, which although not available in the US, is available in other countries. Zolindronic acid is an IV treatment. Abandronate and clodronate are pills. And the recommendation is that you take them for two to three years. Now that's not in everybody. You may prefer a more minimalist approach, or if your risk of recurrence is quite low, the benefit to you is gonna be low of additional therapy. It's, these can be expensive, and if you have a high deductible copay, or if you can't take on the burden of costs, and your doctor's office can't help you get that cost lower, the risks and benefits may not be worth it for you. The benefit between risk and benefit, that ratio may not be favorable. If you have a lot of other medical problems, or if you have side effects related, to the treatment, for example, fevers, or problems with your oral health, your dental health, and you think this may not be in your best interest, then again, this is one of the things we factor into it. Finally, for people who have a limited life expectancy, we generally don't recommend that you go on an adjuvant bisphosphonate. And that's because the benefit's gonna be much lower to you and that toxicity, whether it's side effects or financial toxicity, is not you know, going to be there for you. Finally, these drugs are not available in every part of the world, or perhaps if your pharmacy is low in supply, we don't want you to feel that you're getting inferior treatment. What's new about this, though, is that we hadn't really had compelling evidence that there was a reduction in risk of the breast cancer coming back, and that's more pronounced now. Again, small benefit. I do have to tell you that even people sitting on the advisory panel have mixed feelings about using these medications because we're not sure the extent of the benefit or if the downsides outweigh those benefits. So, just gonna summarize bisphosphonates, which are bone modifying agents or strengthen the bones, should be considered, not recommended, but considered between you and your healthcare team if you're postmenopausal, no matter how you got postmenopausal, for two or three years after the completion of all of your other uh, chemotherapy, your surgery and your radiation therapy. You can be on them when you're on anti-estrogen therapy 
for a short course, but that a lot of things go into whether or not you would go on these. I hope it's been helpful for you. I've covered a lot and it's a little complicated. If you like, drop us a comment in the notes. And if this has been helpful or interesting to you, click like and subscribe. What that will do is help other people who might be interested in this find this video.